Hello and welcome to Talking Migration. I am Osita Osemene. In 2004, I took the dangerous Sahara Desert route, hoping to go to Europe. I spent 90 days in the desert, slept in good pens, escaped several gunshots. My journey eventually terminated in Libya, where I went through hell before I eventually returned to Nigeria. Today, I'm a migration expert. Talking Migration is an educative platform that will practically enlighten Nigerians on the new trends and the dangers of irregular migration. We will give you updates on returned migrants and how they are being reintegrated into the society they left. And of course, we also educate you on the right way to migrate. As you are aware, despite the deaths and the discovery of slave market in Libya, the trafficking business is still thriving. A lot of youths and traffickers still see the deadly desert journey as a means to seek the greener pastures to Europe. Last year alone, 9,000 Nigerians died and why trying to go to Europe through the desert and through the Mediterranean Sea? Why 6,000 were returned from Libya after suffering unspeakable torture and some sold into slavery? The repatriation is still going on as more and more Nigerians are returned from Libya every now and again. This is being done by both the Nigerian government and the International Organization for Migration. So, irregular migration still remains the order of the day. Just recently, between January 2018 and now, we have recorded over 500 deaths of migrants trying to cross to Italy and Spain through the Mediterranean Sea. This simply has to stop. We must do everything to stop this. Today, I am with some special people whom I have invited returnees to this program who have been sharing their experiences trying to go to Europe through Libya route. Join me after the break as you listen to their stories. On DG360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. Constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need is to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that team. Uh, DG 360. Providing clarity to issues. You're welcome back uh, to uh, Talking Migration. Yes, welcome to the studio. Uh, with me, I have Alia and Gift Peters. Both are returnees from Libya, recent returnees. Um, Gift, how are you doing? I'm good, sir. Alia, how are you? I'm good, sir. Oh, we're well, welcome. Thank you. Yeah, Gift, Thank you. please, uh, you, you traveled to Libya. You went from Nigeria. From which state? From Delta State. From Delta State. Please, can you share with me? your experiences moving from Nigeria and all you saw, because you have gone, you have seen, and you have conquered. How, what happened? How did you come about? What, what prompted you? What pushed you out of Nigeria? And what were you actually looking for? The reason why I left Nigeria to Libya is because my family is not having, my dad and my mom are not staying together. And we are six in number. One have died and many five. So they are not taking good care of us. Everybody is living in our own life. We are no more, we, are, we didn't go to school. So I decided to travel out to Libya so that I can find my own, let me look for my own destiny there. So it was unfortunately um, when I was working in Slaughter, I'm a secretary there. So my auntie called me if I want to travel. I said, yes, I would like to travel. So I said, where am I traveling to? She said, I'm traveling to. Libya, but she didn't tell me anything. You mean and your I, auntie called you? Yes, my uncle. That is my uncle's wife. Okay. So I said, okay, I would like to travel. He said, okay, I will introduce you to one of my sister's daughter. So then they will take you along. I said, okay, no problem. So I told my mom that I want to travel. My mom said, okay, if I, if I decide to travel, that since I've decided nobody can stop me, I should go ahead. So the way I'm working... But did you tell your mom you're traveling to Libya? 
Yes, I told my mom, even before I went to Nibia, I carried my mom to that boy's house. So she, the boy and my mom, we conclude, the boy said, if I have handwork, when I got there, I will be doing my handwork. But if I don't have handwork, when I got there, I will be doing any slave work. I said, okay, no problem. Oh, the boy actually told you you are going to do slave work? Yes, like all these house help. Of okay, people. domestic servants. Yes, I said, okay. Okay, no. but were you told you were going to Libya or you were going to Europe? I was told I'm going to Libya. Okay. So the boy said I should prepare everything. So I said, okay. I left Nigeria on the 5th of February. 2015. So when I got there, I went to the boy's house. So when I got there, the boy took me to Anuchukbo. So in Delta State. Yes, in Delta State, and with my money, eighteen thousand. So when we are three in number, three guys and one boy, okay, four in number. So there's two how many people. guys? Three guys. It's only me that is uh, late girl. Okay. So they stop a vehicle. The boy gave me three thousand. He said anything on the way I should to settle myself. He said I, he will call me. I said okay, no problem. So all my journey from Nigeria to uh, Kano is night, so I don't even know the way. I don't know the road we are passing. So when we got to Kano around one, around one o'clock in the midnight, our vehicle gets spoiled. So we enter another vehicle. So when we go to Kaduna, the police people there stop us. They say, where are we going to? They say, we are traveling. They search our bag. They did not see anything. One of them asked me, where are you, where are you traveling to? Ah, look at the way I'm seeing you. There's nothing you are lacking for. So where are you going to? Where are you traveling to Libya? Look at the phone you are carrying. Don't go. I said, no, I want to travel. So he said, before you pull, go, you have to settle yourself. So I said, I'm more say two five. So I said, so you, was, you settled who? I settled, I settled myself. Because if we did not settle, they would take us to police station. At where? At Kaduna. At Kaduna. So I settled myself with 2,500. So we started going. So when we got to Kaduna, they introduced us to one allergy. But I don't know the allergy's name. So before I got there, they buy a jab for me. They said I used to cover my face. So I bought the jab, 500 naira. So the allergy man took us to a vehicle and drove us. We are going, we are going. So I don't even know the way. All my own that when I got to Libya, I will start doing the domestic work. But did they tell you, apart from domestic work, did they tell you anything that you're going to go through from... Libya? No, 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 they okay. did not tell me anything. Okay. So when we got there, before we got to the place, they, they call that place border. The large man called, make a, a phone call. He said, people should read you that we are almost close to that border. So I called my mom. I said, now we are want to cross the border. My phone will no longer go. So people cannot reach me again. My mom said, okay, go in peace. Nothing will happen to you. I said, I said no, I, I mean, I believe that nothing will happen to me. So from there, when we stopped there, uh, they, brought, they brought a bike. The bike man carried us. So that place is very risky. So any, if they catch you there, they will, be, they, will, they will arrest you. So just I passed there, successful, nothing happened to me. So How many of you were you then when you passed the border? As in, we are many, but due to the place is very dangerous. Everybody is just going to our own. So I did not even know anybody. Nobody knows me that I'm on my own. So we got there. So when we got there, I don't even, there was a place that kept us. So when they kept us there, they brought a small vehicle and they put us inside the vehicle. They drove all my journey to... Um, Agedes, it was nine, so I don't even know the way. So when we got to Agedes, they said they were going to move on Monday. And when we got to Agedes, I don't have much money on me again. People are buying water, people are buying blankets, jackets, stockings. They did not tell you how much we are going to go with? No, they did not tell me anything. So when I got I said, ah, now I don't, I don't have money, I'm not going to do it. I only have a little money with me. So I bought um, um, stockings, water and some food. I don't have food. People are buying food and I don't know anybody there. So there was a man called Americana. I said, no, I should not worry about food. That's going to buy me all those things. I said, okay, thank you. The man carried me, carried me to where they sell food. He buy me some things, sardine bread, biscuit. So I carried it along with my water. So on my way, we moved on Monday evening. We, en we entered desert. That desert was very risky. The first day we slept on the way, around 2 o'clock, where there was cold, and I don't have friends there. Many people are with blankets, so you have to make friends so that you will join them with their blankets. So I make a friend there, I beg them, so they cover me with their blanket. And the little food I have, I kept it there. So there was an animal there, donkey. He ate my food, he finished off my food. I said, okay, no problem. I still have hope that nothing is going to happen to me. So the way I say, I say, ah, we are... Which that we're going to reach this place? I said very soon, very soon. 
people are scared, they are cold. Many, as in when we are going, we are seeing skeletons. Even if we see a place, they um, skeleton of dead bodies. Yes, people that died. Of, yes. So I say a lot of people have died in this road. Assuming I know I won't have entered this road in the first place, and nobody told me that this is how desert is. I said, well, I've started, I've started, no more going back, I need to finish the journey. So that is what I, I spent five days on, de on desert. So the last day we entered the, um, Sabah, the enemy wanted to work on me, but God said no. That day nothing was wrong with me, but the day we entered Sabah, my body, it's like, as in, I'm dead already, but God brought me back again. So when I got to Sabah, we got to Sabah on the 13th of February. So we got there. 2015. Yes, so we got to one boy's uh, ghetto. They called that boy Ben. So the night, they, they were, the night we got there, so the boy's trying to bring some boys so that they will sleep with us. I said, no, I will not do such work because this is not what, I, this is not what they told me. If so I you mean the guy that took you handed you over to somebody in Sabah? Yes. So, okay. the, so the guy wanted to, the guy brought some guys there so that they will sleep with us. They slept with so many girls, but me, I escaped. I, when, when I later went back to the room and I, I locked the door, I slept up. So on Sunday morning, uh, the guy called us, me and my friend. He said uh, they have paid for us. There was uh, one, one man come and carry us. They have yes. paid, that which means they paid money on you people's Yes. Said. So I said, ah, paid money. The guy said, yes, uh, all the money we used to come from Nigeria to Libya, they have paid for it. So when, when the man come, we we'll just follow the man. So when we got there, we we'll settle the man. I said, okay, oh, they are, they let, a lot of people are coming, carrying people. So when the man came, the man is Mohammed. He's a Ghana man. When he came, he carried me and my friend. So on our way, he's carrying us to Sirit. They call that place Sirit. On our way, a lot, a lot of challenges. We normally see police. They will be stopping us. They say we should go back, go back, go back. They have sent us back for more than five times. So Nathan went to Jofra. So from there, the, the man now go back to the street and tell her, his wife that the guest is bringing to you. They are stopping them on the way. And now he has no money. So when the man, the place the man kept us in Jofra, there's an auntie there. And the auntie is Auntie Joy. He's our town person from Geta. He called me, said, are you traveling to Libya? Are, are you going to see it? I said, yes. He said, this, this man, I've heard that in the next two weeks, they will be, they will be throwing bombs. In series, why is this man want to kill you guys? I said, I don't know. Since the man have, uh, he has the idea that in the next two weeks there will be bomb and bullets in series, and he wants to take us. Then me, I believe that nothing is going to happen to me because anything that happens in series that will make them to they are making them to throw bomb. I was not there when the fight started, and nothing was going to happen to me. The guy said, the woman said, okay, since you know that nothing is going to happen to you, nothing is going to happen to you. So the man came. And he, the, man, the man and his wife and one girl called Maria, three of them came back to carry us from Jofra. Immediately the lady came, they, as, we, as, as we are going to see it, we see, uh, see the police people, but they did, not, um, take, uh, they did not say we should go back again. Mm, but did you finally get to see it? Yes, we finally, I, got, uh, I arrived in Syria on the 23 of February. Okay. So from then, the woman said that this is the work we are going to do. Which work? Prostitution work. I said, ha, this is not what they told me in Nigeria. And besides, I've not done this before. Even if my family don't have money, I've made a promise between me and God that not to make me to do prostitution work or make me to abort a baby. That, that is the promise I made. I cried that day. So the man called me, said, you have no choice. You have to do what I asked you to do. Or you will call your family. They will send my money from Nigeria to Libya. I asked how much is the money. She said, I'm going to pay her $400. I said, $400. I said, I don't know. Um, as in, can you please tell me the exactly amount in Nigeria? She said no. I said okay. So one of my um, the other get the money and she said you have no choice. You have to do it very soon. Let me say in the next six months you just finish paying the money. You'll be you'll be madam of your own. I said okay. I started doing the work. This I've not done the work before and my madam doesn't tell me how to do it. It does. They said that before they start the work they will give injection because of. Uh, infection and so that I will not got pregnant. She did not do anything. All she wanted that we will pay her her money. E even the herself where we are staying, she normally maltreat us. If we didn't work, she will not give us food there. And if we refuse, and if we don't attend to customers as well, she will, the, the two money you work, she will might not sit from there. He said this is the money because he did not attend to customers as well. So just, just tell me your experience. Eh? Let me know your experience during that period we were doing the work with the woman. What happened? 
So during the experience, when I was doing the work with the woman, I heard that they, they normally call those people ICC. They are going to come as in bust the place. So the girl came and said, okay, my dad, husband said, I'll next carry this children away from this place because before now, they will start a uh, war. Yeah. The woman said, no, there is nothing going to happen. So um, the day the woman said, I want to I abort the baby in my stomach. I said, okay, she went to market. So you mean you got pregnant in the process? Yeah, in the process, I got in pregnant. That place. Yes, I got pregnant there. And then they said, I'm going to abort the baby, that she can't be feeding me and feeding the baby, maybe after giving birth. I said, okay, oh. she went to the market, she buys spirits for me, spirits that normally used to clean wood. She buy it, she bought a uh, lime orange. Gift, thank you very much. I will come back to you. Um, Alia, what, 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 is, what is your experience like? My experience, what took me to Libya is about when I lost my mom and my grandma. So I was down, nobody to help You lost me. your grandma? And my mom. And your mom? Yeah. Ah, Ali, I'm going to come back to you. We'll be taking a short break now, and um, uh, when we come back, we'll continue. On Deji360, we don't just ask the questions. What is wrong with amending the constitution the way uh, the, the National Assembly members have been doing it? We seek answers. Constitution is constituent. Our problem is not um, lack of laws. Our problem is lack of the willpower to implement our laws. Answers that provide clarity. While we negotiate, we should try to make it a point that the girls must be complete. The clarity you need to make informed judgment so that you can make the right decision and take action. People are saying it is you politicians that are responsible for this, that you are the reason why oh, this is happening. All these dollars that call themselves governors in this country? I wish we had people like Tony at the National Assembly. God forbid that I go to join that uh, family. DG 360. Providing clarity to issues. Welcome back. I still have with me Alia and Gift Peters. Yeah, um, Alia, so, you said you lost your grandma. Yeah. What happened? She was sick. So after that, she did. Even my mom, too. So after that, I was being through a lot of things. So I learned hairdressing. So my you are a stylist? Yeah, yeah. So when I finished my stylist, so I have to feed myself and my junior ones, even my dad. So my sister, she was in Baeza, she came to Abeokuta with me. So one of my friends just came to my house that, uh, Alia, can you travel? I said to where? To Europe, Italy. I said, Italy. Thank God, oh, if it is Italy, I will follow you go. Well, what kind of work are we going to do there? And she said, like, I have my hand work, I'm going to do my hair studies there. And my sister, she's a nurse too. That she too, she will be a nurse. So she will be doing nursing things, all those things. There, so I said, okay, no problem. So who is dependent that will take us to the Italy? So she said, she's her sister. I said, okay, okay, take us to the woman, let us see her. So after that, she went back. She comes to my house and took us to that woman. So Where the, is the woman staying? She's living at Okuta too. Okay. So when we reached there, the woman said, I'm welcome. What's your name? My name is Ali. My sister's name is Abike Olumi. So the woman said, we're gonna pay him like 10, 20, 20,000 now before we travel. So as for now, we don't have anything because we don't have money. My sister wants to. You didn't have money and you yes. wanted to actually travel? Yes. I said, okay. can you help us with that 20,000? I will tell my daddy she will give your mom when you took us to that place so that she do not worry about that. My daddy will pay that 20,000 for her. Your daddy said, paid? Yes. And she said, there is no problem that, okay, she will help me and my sister. I said, okay. Well, that 20000 is for what? It says for passport. I said, passport is not 20000 it's 15000 that, that's, that's international it. passport. Yes. So that time is 2014, early 2014, January. So she said we should not work with her. She will do everything for her. We should go and bring her a photo passport for her. So we went to make a photo passport and give it to her back. So she, now, she did not call us. She said we should be going there. She will call us one day. When everything is settled, she will call us. Okay. I said, no problem. My sister said... She's not going, Jerry. That woman, she's not pure. So, 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 so
My sister, let's go. We can't go back to Bayezza. Nobody is there with you. We all live together now. So let us go to Italy together. So we'll be seeing ourselves every day, every time. And she said she will follow me because of that. I said, thank you. So that woman just called her. Maybe after three days or five days, she just called her that we should get ready. We are moving tomorrow. <sighs> just like that. I will not buy anything along. He said, we should not. We just pick our plan. Two top, three jeans. Oh, Jarabia. I said, we don't have Jarabia. We used to go to church that time. Okay, she said, okay, no problem. She just take two towels and two jeans. That when we reach there, she will do shopping for us. Okay. I said, okay, no problem. Then we took her and luggage, me and my sister. We reached her house that very day. So she just said she took us to Kano. After Kano, then we took, <laughs> we took, um, is it not sheep? Yes, sheep. From she, from that, that was what she was telling people yes, that, that when you get to Kano, when you we get take to ship. So someone will come and pick us. So when we reach the side, they will put us inside the ship. We'll be going to Italy. I said, thank God. It's cheap too, it's good. When it is not a own plane. So we manage the ship like that. My sister said, no problem. So she did not, before we reached Kano, we passed through a lot of things because our event could catch fire. So at where? At, I don't know this okay. area. Mm. So all of us were jumping. So I even moon that time. So because my sister, she's one of us jumped down. So she wanted to catch me, but she can't. So I moon that time. When we reached Kano, we saw one man, and I don't even remember his name because it's been long. So I don't want to remember all those things, but I just feel like to share my story so that another person can learn from it. So when we reached Kano, the guy, the man just took us inside one cab. From there, we we're just going straight, straight. We don't know any because we don't used to travel. But sorry, uh, Alia, before you traveled, you said you paid some money and uh, the woman. You know, what happened at that period when you paid money and they just called you? They just called you and said people are going. What happened? Yes, she called us. We don't even know anything. When we reached Agades, mm. so I was crying. I said, oh, my sister, please, I want to go home. Me, I'm tired, though. This kind of, I don't even understand. Because that time when she called her, we don't even know anything. It's just that the woman used to charm on us. Because when she called us, as in... My sister that doesn't have interest in traveling. She was even doing what I was. Ah, hola. Yeah, I, 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 okay, 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 let's go, let's was go. going to Europe in a hurry. Yes. So I don't even tell. We don't even tell her dad that we're going. We don't inform him. We only inform our assemblies that we're going. They should take care of himself. And you put now embarked on the journey. And yeah. and Agades, what was your experience like? Agades, when we reach Nije border, mm. we have little change. I don't have any change. My sister has it, but she kept it. So when we reach Nije border, so we, me, I don't, I say, me, I don't have money to buy food though. And the woman, she gave us 6,000 naira at Lagos, Ejidlo, before we took the vehicle to Kano. So the 6,000 is with me because we are four in number that we are going that day. So... Do you still remember the woman? Is, she, is the woman still in Lagos? No, she's in Libya. She died in Libya too. Okay. okay. So when we reach Nije, the sister that she gave us, we spend it in Kano. Where is your sister now? She's dead also too. Where? She died in Libya? She died in Nigeria. She died in Nigeria. She returned back, she eventually returned back to Nigeria? Yes. And died? Yes. What happened? What, what was the cause of her death? When she was living with that woman in Libya, I didn't live with her. What state in Libya did they live? Tripoli. Tripoli? Yeah. Okay. So when she was with her in Tripoli, because my sister, she's so kind, as in she doesn't have... She can't fight, so gentle. So whatever the woman told her she'd do, she will do it because she doesn't want any trouble with that woman because the woman is so wicked. So me, since I reached Tripoli, Libya, me and that woman, we used to fight every day. If my husband, one day she wanted to punish me, she used my head to raise me up on my knee. In their connection house? Yes. So. Since then, she'll be calling me old man Jay. I'll be mommy water. So I say thank you, sir. Anything you call me, no problem. After then, I left his house August, that is 2015. So I went, I got some money that time. So I went living house. I was doing um, a booze work. That is out house made. So my sister was there. 
because she had a lot of a lot of money with that woman. So she wanted to collect her money before she left. Me, I have little change, but I can't answer. What work did you do there? With the her? work mm. we did, I can't explain it, but God knows the best. With the woman, yeah, the kind of work they say you should be doing, and you were making because money. Because when I reached, she said, because when I reached before I left Nigeria, I told her, I'm going to do S tele when I reach. There is no problem. So she has salon, the woman has salon and tailor. So in Libya, yes, she didn't put me there because when I reached there, she was not around because she was in Nigeria. She pushed us. So when I reached there. When I reached there, so one woman, his name is um, Austin. We used to call him Austin. So he, he said, ah, we are welcome. So, 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 so. Before, before I, I reached Tripoli, my sister was the first person that I reached Tripoli. So when I reached there, I was hungry. Because before I reached Saba, we spent like three weeks in Gatron before reaching Saba. Yeah. So... After Saba, the next day they pushed me, they pushed my sister, but my sister forced me into Tripoli. Uh, you know, uh, Alia, I want to actually know your experience. My you know, experience. Yeah, your experience in what you, the experience you got when you were in, 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 in Libya, in Tripoli, because that was where you actually stayed. You know, and you know, you said your sister died, and yeah. you were there when the whole thing happened. What was your experience? My first experience in Libya is so bad. What is it like? Uh, because the first day I reached there, uh, the work that I did, as in, is you understand what I mean? No, what work is that? Because you see, you t you said earlier on that you are going to say something because you want people to learn. What work was yeah. that? Okay. When I reached there, I do prostitution. Okay. So after then. And that was not what they told you initially that you were going to do. Yeah. So you were forced into doing the prostitution. Yeah. It was not as you prepared yourself from Nigeria to mm -hmm. go and do prostitution in Libya. No, no, no. no. Okay. So I accept that I would do. So after doing the, the work, so when I finished being the lady, the woman, I left there without collecting any money I have with her. So I left there to go and get a house so I'm living. So my sister was there. I mean, I don't, we don't used to call ourselves since I left there because the woman doesn't want me and my sister to communicate or to see each other. So when I left there, when, I, when my sister called, you know, it's not the one that called me. One of my big sisters, she's the one that called me that, Aliyah, your sister, she's not feeling fine. Can't you just come and come and pick her from that woman's house? I said, okay, I'll call. Since the woman doesn't want me, I can do anything that I want when I reach there. So... When I reached when when I reached there, I saw my sister. She was very very sick, as in she doesn't have body, so she can't tie me. I said, "Hey, B, why are you like this? Can't you come up for this woman's house?" She said she wanted to collect the money. I said, "You can't collect the money from this one. If you want to collect money, you will die." So we people know if you ask money from this woman, she will kill you, and you don't have anything that you can do, that God, that to call God, God, help us, help us. And God is helping us. Then you to help yourself. She said, so, okay. How long, how long did it take you from, from Agades to Gatron? Because you said you spent some time in Gatron. Yes, we, from Agades to mm. Gatron, that is desert to Gatron. Yes. Desert, uh, desert. she bought us, she even took care of us from um, Agades. Because there is no connection with woman she's using at Zibola. Mm. How long did it take you? And what was your experience like from Agades to Gatron? They gave us full stuff, provision. So, on our way to deserts. So, we have provisions. We don't feel hungry. They she was taking good yes, care of you Yes, yes. She bought us blankets, even nose cover, cover, everything, socks, gloves. And so, that you are going to Europe? Yes. She bought everything. She paid Antibola. Antibola gave everything to us. So... When we, we we even spent like one week or a week from desert to Gatro. But when we reached Gatro, my dad, we are calling this husband and wife that we are we are not eating, we don't have anything. So how long did you spend in Gatron? 
they spent like three, three weeks. Three weeks? In, a, yes. in, a, in where? In the desert or? In Gatron. The, yeah, where in Gatron? I don't know the house, but later, later come and pick us. From is it connection house? No, uh, camp, the camp. That, some ghettos. Okay. So they keep us in that ghetto. We are plenty. And what were you doing in that ghetto? That we not doing anything, we are just playing. We are not doing anything to be sincere. So, after we called her that we are not eating, nobody gave us food. We'll be taking Labidu, the, um, um, Labidu. Mm. you know Labidu, the right? The Bino. The okay. Mm. So, we'll be taking the Bino in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, with only water. So, my sister said she will not take anything, she'll be fasting. So, she for three to... weeks, people took the Bino and water? My sister, she, because she went to white garments. Yeah. So, she's coming by herself. So, she even got into spirits that time. So, me to is the opportunity to be fasting and praying. So later, she now called mom and she come and meet us. Which ghetto are we? I said, we don't know anywhere. We don't know the ghetto. So there is one burger that is with us that day. said, okay, TJ, please, can you talk to her madam that she wanted to talk to? So the, um, the, the burger said, okay, no problem, that's TJ. So TJ talked to her madam. So her madam now said, okay, don't worry. We should not worry that she already know where we are. So later, this guy, Mr. Sonny, so you're also in Gatron too. So you have to come to that side to come and give us food and money. So later. That's after, during the period of that three yeah, weeks. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So when you give us food, money, TJ's, TJ, bug, that burger, TJ, he collected everything from us that he used to give us some things. I said, please, sir, you know that we are not so eating well. And you know my sister, now she's been fasting like one week now. So she needs to eat good thing. He said, when the girls cook the food finish, that they will give us food. Okay, we later call our madam. Madam, please, I don't collect food for our hand, though. Please, come stay to us with another thing again, because they are not okay here. Okay, she said, we should know whether Mr. Sonny will come and carry us, come up for that ghetto. And Mr. Sonny carry us to his house that very night. In Gatron as well. Yeah, yes. So that very night, we ate good food. We slept well with nothing. So after that day, the next day, she pushed me on my way to I am um, Saba. I'm going to Saba. So Saba, so we just enter in loss. I don't know anywhere. I, mean, I don't know anywhere. So there is one place they drop us there. So there is more in loss again that will come and carry us from there to one cap inside Saba. How long did you spend in Saba? I didn't spend like two weeks, but I spent like one week and in Saba, yeah, before heading to trip. Because when I reached Saba, I was not feeling fine at all. I thought, I thought, I started sick. So they wanted to push me. I said, No, they should push my sister. But how did you said your, your, your madam, the madam that helped you, forced you into what you were doing? How did she force you, sir? Did she was there any form of threat, or how did she yes. force you? How did she force you? If you don't do whatever she wanted to do. They will be too mercilessly a brother. Oh. Because some some more a big mom. Because when you reach there, you see that like this, you'll be fear. Fear will catch you immediately. They will use mopping stick. Oaths. They will beat you. Even they can say you naked. They'll be starting beating you like that. Me, I can't they, I can't allow a person to beat me like that because my father and my mom, they don't used to beat me like that. So they beat my sister. Hey. So, sorry, let me come back to your sister. What, you say your, your sister eventually died. What happened? How, how did... Before she left the woman's house, because she's already asked the woman, she wanted to collect her money before she left. So, and my sister used to help some girls because she's on her, she's on her head, his house, her house. So, some girls started running away from that woman's house. So, my sister would tell them that she run away. They should not pay her money again. So, bef so that time she was in Nigeria. Before she come back to Libya, some guys have already run away. And she, my, because my sister has a lawyer, I don't know the lawyer's name. Because there is one woman. So, so are you saying that your sister had a, a problem with the woman? Yes, yes. You know, and it's possible because I'm, what, I'm trying to get the reason what made your sister to die in that. Yeah. Because my sister left, she left that woman's house with sickness. With sickness, very serious sickness. Yes. 
Then I took out my living house. And you could not find out what was the sickness and uh, you know, what happened? When I, when she came to my living house, I started taking care of her. I will buy her medicine. I will call nurse. Your living house in Tripoli? Yes. And she, but she eventually came back to Nigeria? Yes. How long did she spend in Nigeria before, die, before she died? Like two weeks. I'm oh, so sorry. Uh, Alia, I, I will come back to you. I will come back to you again. Your story is very, very touching. And um, uh, Gifts. You said pre uh, initially that uh, your daughter, your, you, you, you were pregnant. Yes, sir. You were pregnant in the connection house? Yes, sir. How, what, what, how? How did it happen? Why? Because I have not done that before. Even the girl, I'm, as in my friend, she normally do the work because that one, she has no mother, she has no father. Because she has been doing that work before, but me, even if my mother is not helping me or my father have no, is not helping me, I've make a I've make a promise that I will never do prostitution work in my life. But so I don't even have. Yeah, the, but do you know the person that impregnated you? There are so many guys normally came um, there. So anyone that came, the mother will say, "Go and work with this one. Go and do this one." What kind so, of work? Prostitution work. So I don't really know the exactly guy that got me pregnant because it's not only it's not one guy. That where is the where is the baby now? Where is the baby? The baby died. Died when? Yeah. How? After everything, after the war in Syria, the baby survived, nothing happened to him. So I carried him back to Nigeria. So after some monks, they, let me say a, a month too, so that the baby will complete one year, one, one year, right? The baby started as in small sickness, not affect the baby. I Me, mean, I don't know how the sickness, uh, I don't know where the sickness, I don't know, I don't, I don't even know the type of sickness. Maybe it's cold or because I normally use cold water to bath the baby when there is heat. So during the time before the sickness came, they said they were going to cut this thing that normally worried uh, little children. We, in our place, we call it Ama. So they said I should go and cut it for him. So I carried the baby. I went to, I carried the baby to my mom. I said, my mom, look at what is wrong with this child. My mom said, okay, I should go and look for more. So that we used to do it fast because it didn't normally suck blood before he kissed the baby. I said, okay, I went back to where I'm staying. I looked for money. I sold my phone. I used it. I took my, they, they gave me money. So I let her go back to my mom. So when I got there, I carried my baby. The money they charged me is too much. So when the aunt, that, that same auntie that introduced me to her sister to travel me, and she called me, said, no, that I don't have such a man. That she carried me to her place. They called her place Igbodo. So when I got there, the man helped me. said, since I don't have money, just do it free for me. I should not bother. So after doing that thing, they said I should treat the thing very well. And it gave me very sad. The one inside the stomach we still go. I said, okay. I started taking care of the baby. Nobody. Since I came back with child, the first day I came back, I told my mom, they called my mom, ah, your daughter is back. Oh. And she carried the baby. Mommy said, ah, she did not bring money. His baby, she went to Libya to carry. I said, ah, since I, I carried the baby, I did not die. Would anybody that want to laugh in that and travel to carry baby, they should go ahead and laugh. If anybody passed through what I passed them, they would not even have the right or the math to even laugh. Me. Did, said, you, did you eventually tell your mommy what you passed through? Before then, mm -hmm. I explained everything to one of my auntie okay. before I got to my mom's place. I explained everything. My mother said, okay, since I came back alive with a baby, there is no problem. There is, there is no problem. She's not bother. I said, okay. I said, now nah, I'm still young. And if my friend see me carrying this baby, it's a shameful thing to me because I didn't even have the intention to have baby now. I said, Mom, I, I so called So the baby her. was not your, it was not in your plan? It's not because my plan. Because they told you you were going to work yes. out, you were going to then, look for money. Yes, I called my mom. I said, Mom, please, can you help me to carry this baby? Why I go out to look for money so that I'd, I will be sending money for you to buy baby things for the baby? My mom, was, my mom said, okay. Was one of my aunties that is very. Um, That's when you, at the time you returned, you were telling your mom. Yes. Uh, uh, um, gift, how did you return back? When they are fighting the war in Syria, mm. many, a lot of people are dying. Uh, and then I called my friend, said, My friend, I will not die in this. Instead of me to die, I'd rather go back to Nigeria and die. My friend said, How, how, how are we going to get out from this place? I said, Don't worry. We will try to escape. And anything that makes those people, those, that Nigeria, I don't know. Whether if Boko Haram, but that side, they normally call them ICC dice. Okay. I said, At Sirit? Yes. So how did you live there? How did you... So that day, that very day, I called the guy. I said, I want to run away. The guy said, I can't follow you. I said, if you can't follow me, then you stay here and die. Me, I don't want to die here. So he said, how are we going to do it? And I said, now, 
everyone all of them are they're almost finished so there is no need to be afraid and the ammo tank the army uh, army soldier are using to fight is very close to let's just go and run to let's run to those army soldier he said okay i said now nah, you are not kind baby it's not like kind baby you're supposed to tell me ah don't go don't go now nah, i'm doing even begging let's go and meet these people it's not only my life that i want to rescue even your life too i said okay i said don't worry about that i'll be I'll carry my baby and I'll be at the front. Do I you carry you hold my clothes? He said, okay. I, the people are there looking at me. I said, you guys, all of you are one, but me, I'm not among you. I will, so I will not die. Yeah, if you guys want to die, you are free to die. So I just carried my baby. I just removed my ties to tie my baby's hair so that because of bomb and bullet will not touch him. So I, I ran away. I went to meet the army soldier. When we got there, because the women, Boko Haram women, are going for a social bomber, so they said we should pull off. And every time they started fighting, and normally we wear trousers. This one is in Syria now. Yes, in Syria. So they said we should pull off. So we, as my friend pulled off, she carried my baby for me. So they said I should. I said no, I will not pull off because I'm not with uh, social bomber. Why would I pull off? They wanted to shoot me, so I decided to pull off. When I pulled off, they did not say anything. So they carried us to one place. When we got there, we said that for a good four months, no food, we have not indoors to eat. If we even see water, let me say one bottle of water. 50 and the people. baby was with you? Yeah, the baby was with me. And it was, I don't even know how the baby survived. Nothing happened to the baby. From there, because I don't used to eat, nothing, I just stopped breastfeeding the baby. If I see water, I will give the baby. There is a thing they call shy there. They will just this place was where? Because this place is no more serious now. You have left serious. That same series. So within the same environment. Yes, okay. so nothing there to give the baby. And I so much thank God when there's in the night, because they normally fight one in the, in the night. The baby not used to cry. We just even if no food, even if no water, the baby will just keep quiet, if not cry. So, so after four months, what happened? So after four months, the soldier rescued us. They took us to Mostrata. We got to Mostrata, we started carrying us to court investigating if we are among the social um ICC. That is the bombers. Yes or not. Suicide bombers. So when we got to court we start, we explained how we came to how as in the reason why they caught us. So after then we don't know that UN I I O M is going for us. So from there we started hearing that because if they catch you, they normally call them Sabaya. So they hearing that in the next two weeks or one month they're going to release the Sabaya. Say so, ah thank God among the um among the Sabayas. So they all say they just came and say all the 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 first people they release is um each um Philippines. So after Philippines they release Nigeria and in Eritrea. And we are five in numbers as Nigeria slaves, the one they catch, we are five in number. So they release us and in Eritrea. Then they took us to Tripoli. The IOM took us to Tripoli, they take good care of us started carrying us to hospital to check if we are still okay, treat my baby, give us some clothes. They, they gave us two flats, in Eritrea, one flat, why in Nigeria, one flat. When well, Nigerian embassy no money came to visit us, anything we need, they will provide it for us. They, as in, they really take good care of us there. So when they came, they said they will travel us to Canada. We should choose Canada or America, the country we like to choose. So five of us said, since we have suffered in Libya, there is nothing we are going to go as in look. Oh, there is nothing we are looking for again. I don't know how that side eats again. Better I'd rather go back to my country and started continue my life there. The Nigerian man, the Nigerian man said, yes, it's okay. They won't go back to Nigeria. They will establish for all. Anything we need, they will give us. I said, okay, that is good. So they just fixed the day that we we'll go back to Nigeria. That's in there. So it's an uh, IOM, the UN agency that brought you back. Yes, the IOM. What year was it? That, that is 2016. I came back to that. I traveled 2015. Mm. I came back 2016. When? I just spent one year in Libya. When 2016? Between March, March, let me say March. March? Yes. Okay. And since you have come back now, how, how has it been? <laughs> since I came back, well, nothing is <laughs> as in, it's the same thing, but if because of that nobody to help me my baby just died because i don't have money to take care of the baby even when the baby is sick i will call this i will call that nobody was there to help me so well, have you gotten any assistance from iom now since you came back in terms of uh, so after some months they called me on phone iom called me i should come to lagos so i was scared i said ever since we came back 
and all the things IOM in uh, Nibia said that they are going to do for them. No, they have not done anything. Now they are asking me to come. I'm scared. I don't know what they are going to use me for. One of the IOM told me that I should not be scared. I should just come. I should obey them and come. I said, okay. I call. Uh, before, I um, my, my baby died. I just left that. I said, what am I doing here now? The only guy, the only baby that gave me joy. Each time I see the baby, each time I stay with the baby, I don't really have joy. Instead of me staying in this place, crying every day because... I don't have friends. Let me just travel. Let me just live there and come to Lagos. So my friends said I should come to Lagos. I should come and stay with them. So I gave, when I was there, the I went and called me. They said I should come to this. Uh, they have a business training. So I was scared. So the people there said I should go. I should not be scared. Now that they have, now they have time for us, I should go. So when I came for the training, I really enjoyed the training. They did well for us. They asked us what, what business we like to do. Everyone said, this is the business I want to do. So from there, I started, go, uh, I started have hope that with IOM, now they have tell us, they have, uh, now they have asked us the type of thing we want to do. There is, as in, I know that they will fulfill their promise. So there is hope from yes. what you have seen in the yes. package and everything. Yes. Yeah, uh, Alia, um, you, 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 you said your sister died and came to your house, came back and died, and you came back. How did you come back yourself? I was planning to come to Nigeria last year, 2000, 2017, that was February. So on my way to Derebi, I wanted to go and buy a phone so that I can come to Nigeria with my friend baby. So I was caught along the journey. So they kidnapped me. They kidnapped you in Tripoli? Yes. Who kidnapped, they kidnapped you? The armies. Okay. So they kidnapped me with my friends, with two girls. So. They took us to the house. We walk, we clean house. Two days we clean house. So after that two days, they said we should go and bring money. That they should come and use us that money to come and bail us out. I said, which money? The that two days you people were with them. What was happening? Ah, they did not do anything bad for us. So the only thing they just use us for is to clean house. We clean house. After cleaning house, we can't do anything. Just they lock us inside one room. So we sleep. Were they feeding you people? They give us food. But after, uh, starting from the third day, they did not give us food. They was asking for money. That we should go and bring money. I said, I don't have money. You collect money from me. They are still asking me money again. They said they will shoot me. They said, ah, there, ah, yeah. They should shoot me if they want to shoot. When they shoot me, they will go and throw me to Kana or anywhere. Sha. So there is one guy among them, Mohammed, that won't hear English. So that one come to us that we should go and find money, that we should call them out, that should come and give us money. So, me, I have a boyfriend there. So I said, my boyfriend, they don't kidnap me. Oh. In Libya or in Nigeria? In Tripoli. Is he a Nigerian person? Your no, boyfriend? he's not Nigerian. Your he's, boyfriend is from he's where? He's not Nigerian, he's Cotton. Okay, from Cotton. So, when I called him, he said, how much? Because he has money. He said, how much? They want what does to he do there, your boyfriend? He was sending something, sure. Okay. So he said, I should not worry that any amount they want to collect, he will give me. I said, but my friend is here with me. Can you help them, please? He said, he can't. Because he used to help my friend. They will not give him back his money. It's OK. Don't worry. That very day they catch me, I was supposed to be in airports. So in the midnight, they will push us. They, I'll be coming to Nigeria. Who, so, who will push you? Because um, I've already caught TC. I want to pass Ghana. Okay, you were going on your own. Oh, my you wanted own. to come back on yes. your own. Okay. So, all my luggage, the two kids, I did not send it. Even the euros, euros that I already changed, they took everything before I came back from the kidnapping side. So, my boyfriend paid the money. He paid 1,000 dinars. That is 100,000 naira. So, he paid the 1,000 dinars. Then I came out. After I came out, so I was looking for money to help the girls because they're my friend. They followed me. So after paying them, they came outside too. So since then, I just go home. I do not do anything. I will be sleeping. Instead of me to go out, they will catch me again. I won't go. So my brother said, okay, what will you do now? You're not going to Nigeria. You'll be sleeping at home every day. I said, no, I'm scared to go outside for now. I don't want to because go outside. Because of your experience. So he said, okay, I should go and look for work two weeks work so when i reach there if i wanted to come my driver will come and pick me from there my madam driver will come and drop me at home that one will be better it's okay 
that one too is okay. That's your madam or your... No, uh, housemaid work. Okay. So then I look for house, housemaid work. I started doing the housemaid. Then two weeks I'll come home. Another two weeks I will spend two weeks there. Two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. So I'll be coming home. They say, okay, there is no problem. So um, after fasting, Ramadan time, I said, I'm going home. That I can't stay in this place again. I'm tired. I want to go and see my family. So How did you eventually do it? I was planning again on my own to move to move again. So I wanted to go and cut the One of my friends just called me, Alia, please, me, I'm going. I said, we are going where? To Nigeria. We to have uh, free tickets, free flight. Uh, okay, I'll be to I do. I beg. I'll go bill. He said, okay, me, I just come embassy. That they will tell me everything about her. Uh, when I reach there. So I went to meet um, Mr. <laughs> I can't remember his name. So when I reached embassy, he's the staff of the embassy. Yes, yes, yes. So he's an Igbo man. So when I reached there, the man I went to the man. The man said I should not worry. I should just put down my name and my phone number. When they are ready to move, they will call us. So when I, when they call us like three times before moving safe. So we went there for interview, all those stuff. Sure. So after them, I got I go home back. When I reach him. So my guys already gave me money for tickets on my own. That should go and cut tickets. I should be going. I can't return the money back. Be, so I, me, I used to sleep. I always say, Ah, uh, Ali, are you not going? I said, I'll go. No, I have to book. When I book, when the time is ready, they will call me. So the time is not ready. So I am just help everybody because that time we are plenty. So it was through IOM you came it's, back? Yes, it, it was through IOM I came back to Nigeria. Nigeria. Okay, and when, it was when you came back you heard that your sister had died? Or no, you heard where was in, where you were in when Libya? I was there, when I was in Libya. Okay, and now, and now that you are back, well, how has it been? What have you... Everything has been good. Okay. Because I have little change when I came back from Libya. Okay, you came I back used, with some money? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So I used that one to establish business. What business you do? Boutique. Okay, boutique. So, okay. so from there, I support my daddy with little change I have to feed my siblings so that me too I can be oh good, I can be okay, so that any guys who might be looking at me, it's bad eyes because for our side, most people know that we, I, got, I went to Libya. Because when my sister did, some used to talk, I used my sister for ritual. I said, I'm not the one that use her for ritual. Okay, but well, since you have you returned yeah, now. when I returned, mm. even my, our family said, they used to fight me. So, I don't used to go out, I don't used to work around anyhow, because for our side, they look cause, any returnees, they look cause like bad people. Yeah, as people that, that have failed mm, or people mm, that have done something wrong. wrong. Okay, but since you, now that you came back, have you done anything through IOM? Have they... Yes, yes, I've done something through IOM. What, what did you do? Like business skill. They okay, train us okay, with, training of yes, business training. They let us know that we should focus on anything, anything we wanted to do in this life, that mm. we should know. We should not look. We should not be like we can't achieve anything or we can't move forward again. That we should be focused, and yeah. they train us how to do business that we that we cannot ever lose. Okay, Alia, thank you very much. I'll still come back <laughs> to you. Um, Gift, <laughs> you have been resting. Um, now, what is your advice? What can you tell other people that might make this kind of mistake or that might fall into this kind of deception? My advice to my fellow youths, as in, my advice to Nigeria guys, even Nigeria guys, because no, it's no only girls that normally travel, it's girls and boys. My advice, anybody that asks you if you, as in, if you, you know, for me, I've not heard anything travel, as now is a outside country, everyone, everybody wants to travel to outside country. Any, anybody that, any, as in, if any opportunity come for you, is outside country, even if it's Italy or Libya, any country at all, please don't go because they will not tell you how the road is. And secondly, they will not tell you the, the consequences and the thing you're going to pass through and the work we are going to do, do there. That. Anybody that tell you that, ah, my friend, are you not going to travel? I'm traveling to Europe. Tell that person, you know, most of us, if that if like now if I tell any of my friends that this is what I passed through, passed through, they will say, ah, you you have you don't since you didn't make your progress there, you don't want me to make my progress. If you tell them, don't go, they they refuse. God knows that you have said them what your eyes see. So if they refuse to help you, they should go ahead and go. But for me, if I if my friend or any of my family member want to travel 
ha, my advice to that person is that yeah, assuming I'm listening to the advice most of my friends gave me, maybe I will not fall into a victim to Arab men okay. to, to the boss. Yeah. My advice to them they should not travel again. As in, if you are in Nigeria, if God said you make it in Nigeria, you must, you must surely make it. Yeah. If your destiny is not in a certain country, no matter how many times you travel out, you will not make it. If your destiny is in Nigeria, you actually you make it yeah. in Nigeria. Thank you, Gift. Yeah, Alia, what, what, what advice do you have? For my our advice, brothers and sisters. And my advice for my brothers and sisters as I there is just that you have to be very, very careful when you heard that about traveling. If someone called you, will you travel? Just tell them no, because it's not easy as a country. Because nobody above me, we've already made a mistake, but we don't want you guys to make some mistakes again. Please be careful with the travel you wanted to travel in this life. Because everybody wants to travel. Because everybody wants things that is good for herself or yourself. Please, just be careful. I can't say you people should not travel. Just be careful. Yeah, thank you very much, Gift and Aliyah. Thank you, sir. Yeah. You have heard it all from the returnees, what they experienced on their journey to Europe through Libya. Quite touchy. More like journey to hell. If you must travel, travel the right way. Until we come your way next week, I am yours, Osita Osemene. Libya returnee. Say no to irregular migration.